God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Mother of the Son of God, behold, I am your child. Filled with grace and pierced inside, you hear my silent cry. O Welcome to Marian Saturday on the God Minute. Today is the last Saturday of Lent before Holy Week, and I'm so glad you've decided to pray with us. Sacred tradition tells us that Mary was so connected to the spiritual world throughout her life, even prior to the Annunciation, that she was keenly aware of the fact that the mother of the Messiah, whoever that might be, would suffer greatly on behalf of her son. So even before she knew that she was the one to be that mother, she knew that great suffering was going to be a part of that person's life. So when St. Gabriel came to her at the Annunciation, she was not simply just saying yes to this grand and beautiful idea. She was also saying yes to all the suffering and pain that she knew would accompany this mission. She was made aware through her connection with the divine and through St. Simeon at the presentation how intensely and specifically she would suffer. I don't know about you, but I think that knowing we are going to feel pain can be as bad as the pain itself, you know? Like, isn't it almost worse sometimes when you know something bad or hard or painful is coming? The knowing that something is looming always causes me great anxiety. If you've ever seen a depiction of Our Lady of Sorrows, you've seen how she is shown with swords in her heart. One of the things that struck me recently was the fact that these weren't just swords that pierced her heart during the passion and death of Jesus, they were there from the start. She took on these swords when she gave her yes, and then she had to live the rest of her life with them in there, like a splinter that never comes out. You just always have that aching and pain and constant discomfort. But she learned to live and love with these swords in there. And rather than seeking to get rid of the pain, she found peace and had trust in spite of it. 
instead of anxiety and impending doom or fear of the future pain. Mary suffered in unison with her son. Some even believe she was allowed to feel the physical pain he was feeling in her body as well. As we enter into Holy Week tomorrow, I invite you to experience the week through the eyes and the heart of our Blessed Mother. Keep constantly on your mind how fully she experienced the agony of his passion and how she carried the burden of this throughout the entirety of her motherhood. And a last thought to leave you with. Next Friday, Good Friday, is the anniversary of Christ giving Mary to us as our mother. So I'd also invite you to reflect on this act next Friday in a special way, thanking her in some unique way for accepting this. Because now, as mother of all humankind, an additional sorrow is laid upon her heart. Her knowing that so many would choose not to honor her, trust her, and love her as their mother. And yet, she still said yes. Behold your son Behold your mother Lead us as one Back to our Father Together, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us glorify our Savior who chose the Virgin Mary for his mother. Confident that he will hear us, we ask. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. Eternal Word, you taught your mother Mary to choose the path that was best. Let us follow her example and hunger for the food of everlasting life. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. O Virgin Mary, there has not risen in the world among women one similar to thee, blooming as the rose, fragrant as the lily. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. O sacred Virgin, hear the song of my praise. May Almighty God watch over and protect us in blessing this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
An additional beautiful thing about Mary as Our Lady of Sorrows is her ability to reveal things to us about our spiritual lives. In his book, Deliverance Prayers, which I highly recommend, Father Ripperger states, When St. Joseph and Mary took Jesus to St. Simeon, he said to Our Lady that her heart would be pierced so that the thoughts of many would be revealed. Our Lady, by undergoing the passion with Christ, would merit an intimacy with God that no other creature had. As a result, he reveals things to her that he does not reveal to others. However, he will allow us to petition her so that she may reveal hidden things by an ordinary, actual grace relating to the spiritual life. As an example, Father Ripperger suggests praying a novena to Our Lady of Sorrows to ask her to reveal to us which spiritual vices we suffer from that she would most like us to overcome, or things like that. Our faith is so rich, isn't it? I put a link to his book in the notes for this episode if you feel called to check that out. Thank you for praying with us. You are so appreciated. We will see you tomorrow. from